And now we're going to go over the square root functions and literally square root functions as well. So really what, uh, what we are focusing on between them is that they both have a similar structure in nature. It's just the differences is that literally squared root functions, there's going to be some type of constant that transforms um, our given slope and our x coordinate as well inside of the square root as indicated in the second part of our images that we have. So we notice in particular, depending on the nature of how our square root is already set up from the basis of just square root of x, when we start at zero, it goes all the way out in the positive direction, indicating that our domain is going to start uh, with zero, goes all the way out to infinity, and then also does the same thing for the range, starts at zero, and goes all the way up to infinity as well in the positive direction. Now, if we were to have a case where we are subtracting x from 4, technically what would happen is that there's going to be 4 over here. On the x-axis, and 0 as well. It's going to go all the way out to negative infinity as we are subtracting since we have a negative uh, since we have a negative over here. And then we're also going to have zero as well, given the fact of our y range starting over here, and we have our uh, literally square root function starting between y, and then we have x over here. Hence we already see the following. Let me just zoom out so you can get a better understanding. And now let's head over to our first practice problem. Now to go over our first practice problem, we are denoted with the function of f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. So in order for us to be able to figure out exactly how this entire graph will actually be uh, laid out, what we can do to be able to set it up is that the series of steps we need, we have to first figure out exactly one, where the starting point is going to be, since we are dealing with a square root function, uh, square roots have starting points, And we would have to determine the domain and range for such. And so we're able to figure out such. If we were to set first our starting point to be zero, so we would have, I'm just going to focus on the first step up here and just zoom out. There we go. So, so for our first step over here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set y is going to be equal to zero, which we just plug in for f of x, so it's zero is equal to the square root of x. It's 2, we square both sides, we get 0 is equal to x plus 2, we just subtract 2, we subtract 2, and so it's equal to um, <clears throat> negative 2, and when y is 0, so it's y, so we have negative 2 and 0. This is our starting point to begin with. So let's draw the graph. And since we are dealing with a positive um, direction as well. This is how the graph is going to be look, uh, determined. So we do one, two, starting point, one, two, 
And since we're dealing with square roots, typically it will just be one, two, three, four, one, two. That's just the nature of how the graph is actually going to be going. So it's going to go up every single square point that we have, but it's going to be having a unique starting uh, starting point. So we have one and one, and then we have two, two. It's going to keep going just in this part. So we can therefore say that our domain is going to be negative two all the way to positive infinity, and then our range is going to be zero all the way to positive infinity as such. Let's just zoom out. And finally, let's go work on our second practice problem. Feel free to take a screenshot of this part too. And so let's go over second practice problem. So in our second practice problem, we're given the function square root of three minus x. And so when we have done so, what we need to do first is find our starting point. Then find our y intercept and figure out the domain range. When we've done the following, let's just start things off. So for us to be able to configure our starting point, for any square root function that we have, we're just going to have y is going to be 0 at one point, and that means we just got to configure what x is. So let's just get this thing started. 1. So we'll have uh, 0 is equal to the square root of 3 minus x. So then we square, square. And it looks like, oh, wait. 0 is equal to 3 minus x is 3 minus 3, and it looks like x is going to be 3. The reason being is because when we move this 3 over, in fact, just to make things clearer for everyone, this thing 3 equals x, we can just shift this around, and then divide by negative 1, nothing changes and then we just have x is equal to 3 so that's our starting point then we have to figure out the y-intercept and it's super 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 easy all our y-intercept is is when x is 0 and it looks like it's just the square root of 3 that's pretty much it that is our y-intercept that's when we plug in 0 to here we just have the square root of 3 and then we have to figure out our domain range so that's the easiest part Let's just go all the way down. Let me just build this up for you guys and gals. Right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So what, x is zero here. Looks like yeah, right here. That is where our intercept is, and since we know where our starting point is, it's going to be here. So, that means we're going to move this thing over here. It's going to keep going all the way out. As such, in our domain, it's going to be... And the reason why it's actually going out that way, aside from our y-intercept, is because we have negative x this way. That is really just the main reason why. Then we have x being equal to 3. So, from our domain, um, it is going to be... 3 all the way to negative infinity. And the range is going to be 0 all the way to negative infinity. For we know that the domain is x, and just y. I'm just close on. And feel free to take a screenshot of this, and let's head over to the vertical line test. Hey everyone, thank you again for taking time to watch this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe, smash the like button, and ring the bell for any notifications as well. And if you have any other questions, by all means, feel free to put it in the comment section as well. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.